Welcome everyone to uh, Breakout 5. This is the breakout uh, hosting John Piasecki, CEO and President of Piasecki Aircraft. Uh, we're gonna give it just one more minute, make sure we don't have any stragglers and then we'll go ahead and begin. As a quick point of note, uh, everyone, you are automatically muted. This is just to kind of speed the flow. We don't have a ton of time for this breakout. So uh, we encourage you to ask any questions for the Q&A via the chat feature in Zoom. And we will get to some questions uh, at the end of John's presentation. All right, so hello again, everyone. My name is Nate Daly. My uh, colleague, Rin Mackey, and I are part of the facilitation team that is uh, helping to put on this virtual extravaganza. Uh, welcome, once again, to Breakout 5, uh, hosting John Piasecki of Piasecki Aircraft, CEO and President. And John is going to go uh, a little more in depth into a couple of their, uh, their aircraft, the Ares and the PA-890, EV tall. So without further ado, uh, John, I'm going to hand it over to you. And once again, if everyone, if you could put your comments or your questions into the uh, chat channel, uh, we'll try to pull some at the end of John's presentation. So John, after you. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the introduction and uh, welcome everybody. Um, we will uh, we'll be covering two projects today that Piasecki is, uh, is uh, pursuing under transformational air mobility. Um, the first one will be the aer aerial reconfigurable system. And uh, let me pull up the, uh, the slides here in a second. Can you all see that? Well, I guess you can't, you're all muted. Um, we can. Yes. Excellent, excellent. So, so the um, the first one we'll we'll address is Aries, and uh, if uh, uh, we go to the second slide, um, the Aries is a is a very innovative concept, and uh, like a lot of innovation, it was born out of uh, a desperate need, and uh, we we got involved in uh, 2005 with the Army, who was very concerned about. Uh, being able to recover casualties, particularly in urban environments. And uh, they had bad experience, or had having bad experiences, uh, losing air crews and what have you. And very often the, the manned helicopters that were trying to, to rescue people couldn't get to where the casualties were, requiring, uh, requiring them to go uh, travel to the helicopter with additional risk and what have you. Um, so, so a landing footprint became a really important aspect, and the objective there was to be able to land in a city street. So, uh, we looked at a lot of different configurations, and we selected the ducted fan uh, tilting uh, wing configuration uh, that you see with Aries, and uh, and it has a lot of great advantages for getting into and out of uh, a small. Uh, confined complex terrain. So uh, we also saw benefits of a small footprint across other military users, including the, the Navy and the Marine Corps, which have to be able to store their aircraft in hangars or be able to transport them in uh, tactical airlifters like the C-130. So there was, uh, there was a common need there across the, uh, the services. Um, the other aspect that drove the, uh, the design selection was that our our, uh, our customers, the uh, Army and the Marine Corps and the Air Force, all have uh, demanding speed and range capabilities that uh, uh, really benefit from having a configuration that can convert to wingborne flight performance. So uh, with our original design mission of CASAVAC and even with respect to um, cargo and, and uh, other missions, um, productivity, speed, and productivity and responsiveness were critical. So we selected the, uh, the tilt duct configurations to, to be able to take advantage of um, high speed over 200 knot capability uh, so that we could get to our objectives uh, quickly. And, uh, and then once being able to, to arrive there, then convert back into 
uh, vertical takeoff and landing mode and uh, uh, reduce our footprint to about half of what a conventional helicopter of equivalent capability is. Um, presented there on the right, you see the H-60 uh, open rotor landing footprint, about 100 uh, foot uh, diameter, whereas the Ares uh, is about half of that. So uh, the other important thing when we looked across the missions, particularly with the idea of supporting distributed uh, small units, um, their capacity to be able to handle a lot of cargo at any particular time is fairly limited. It's about 3,000 or so pounds. So we wanted to have, for affordability's sake, a vehicle that was sized to, to meet that small unit need. Um, however, there are also missions that demand significantly more, for moving water blivets of uh, four to 6,000 pounds or fuel blivets, what have you. And those might be short distance missions and they might only account for about 5% of your missions, but having a system that can modularly team by ganging up together to lift outsized loads was a desirable feature that allowed the basic air vehicle to be sized for the optimum uh, 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 mission, but with peak capability without impacting unit cost. Um, autonomy is a critical part of the overall system. In 2010, we flew the world's first man-rated uh, helicopter with our ClearPath uh, LiDAR-based uh, guidance navigation and control system. Uh, that technology was very successful. We did that with Carnegie Mellon. Um, that was then spun out into a, uh, uh, another company called Near Earth Technologies, who are doing great work under the ACUS program and follow-on efforts to try to bring that capability to the industry. Next slide. So, so the, uh, uh, the con ops that we're trying to address under our Air Force contract is to be able to look at the um, uh, anti-access aerial denial, being able to project uh, power uh, into those uh, uh, threat areas and then support operations on a, uh, at extended distances. And the basic idea is to be an air bridge from agile T tier three bases where C-130s and C-17s are deploying cargo and then move that cargo directly to the small units. Um, it's a critical part of being able to operate in a disaggregated fashion that, that the services believe will be necessary in order to have uh, survivable forces uh, and project force in the future. Um, the demonstrator aircraft has been uh, uh, fabricated and, and gone through a series of qualification tests, propulsion, structural, system checkouts. We did hardware in the loop testing, uh, modal and vibration structural coupling testing. The aircraft has about 30 hours of powered ground tests, uh, and we're currently working towards uh, flight demonstration within the next year. The graduation flight will be pretty simple, uh, vertical takeoff and transition to forward flight um, with, a, um, with our cargo module, uh, land, uh, and then return uh, uh, without the car cargo module. This will be a critical step in validating the technology and then will inform the development of an objective vehicle. The next platform that I wanted to talk about is the PA-890. Uh, the, uh, the configuration is a slowed rotor wing compound. Our, uh, uh, our project was initiated by uh, uh, fairly demanding customer requirements for 200 nautical mile mission uh, plus IFR reserves. Um, we had to size the cabin to carry uh, some unique cargo. Uh, it has the capacity for about five passengers. Um, our, our foremost objective here is to reduce direct operating costs, um, uh, which we feel is achievable uh, at a level about 50% below single turbine helicopter. The uh, configuration has attributes that uh, naturally dispose it to a very low acoustic signature namely the very low disc loading rotor uh, with low tip speed uh, and then in hover and then in forward flight unloading that rotor even further and slowing the rotor down to reduce drag has huge benefits with respect to the acoustic signature as well. Analytical uh, assessment of that signature uh, uh, using the WAP WAP analysis out of uh, uh, Penn State is about 68 to 73 dB. Uh, in hover and flyover regimes. 
Um, this is a picture of the configuration. You can see that in the hover mode, the, the, verticals, uh, the, the wing is oriented vertically to minimize download and the tail thruster is oriented to the side to provide for anti-torque and yaw control. And then as the aircraft transitions to forward flight, the angle of the attack of the wing uh, 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 optimizes to a uh, uh, maximized lift and the rotor is unloaded uh, uh, by about 70% from its lift and propulsion responsibility by the wing and the thruster. Um, another important feature of the configuration is a redundant fault tolerant electric power and propulsion system. Uh, the, uh, the whole concept here is, uh, is to allow IFR operations with um, absolute uh, safety and the system is designed to be able to withstand two faults uh, uh, and uh, enable a safe landing. In the event there's a total power out, um, the design of the aircraft does allow for excellent auto rotation characteristics, which always is a desirable feature from a safety requirement and uh, remains a critical element of obtaining FAA certification under Part 27. The design effort on the, uh, the battery is uh, focused on modularity. Uh, we see battery technology evolving uh, over the years and we want to be able to retain the capacity to uh, uh, adopt the, the latest and best technologies. Um, we have the, uh, the ability to take the, char the batteries out and recharge them uh, at very efficient rates um, and uh, 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 quick swap out for, uh, for er emergent operations. So the, uh, the whole rationale of our selection of this configuration is based on um, years of experience in the vertical lift uh, arena and uh, selecting a configuration that's best suited to meet our customers' needs at the lowest risk. And so we did a configuration study that looked at over 25 different configurations uh, and uh, the top two configurations that came out of that study were the tilt rotor and the uh, slow rotor wing compound. Um, the tilt rotor being able to close the emission at about 8% reduction in gross weight relative to the compound, but both aircraft were able to close within the part 27 uh, uh, 7,000 pound gross weight limitation. So uh, in considering the risk, we felt that the compound uh, was much more attractive uh, path to achieving certification uh, with a minimum level of cost, uh, time, and money, um, which is essential in order to be able to provide our investors a reasonable return on their, uh, on their investment. Um, another important part of our uh, strategy here is to focus on existing revenue generating markets. And uh, our initial focus is in the uh, emergency medical services uh, sector. Uh, both of our launch customers are, are in this sector. Um, EMS is a, uh, is a major focus as well as medical logistics uh, and uh, uh, leveraging the success of existing markets. All right. So first I'd like to thank everyone for their participation. Uh, I apologize that we did not have time to get to the Q&A. Uh, once again, there is a networking session though right after this next YouTube live session. So please join in there and uh, I, you should be able to, to do a little Q&A as well as networking then. Um, don't forget to post whatever you came up with on social, whatever social platform of your choice is. And I would just like to encourage you definitely to tune in to the next YouTube Live. Uh, there are going to be some special guests joining us, some unannounced special guests, I've been told, joining us in the YouTube Live. So, uh, oh, look at that. I believe I just got a message saying that we are holding in our groups, which if that's true, then we probably do have some time for, for Q&A. John, if you're up for it. Absolutely, absolutely, Nate. Great. Hi, Herman. Let's see. If you have, if you have questions, can, can you go ahead and post them in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll just take them first come, first serve. Looks like someone unmuted me. Hey, John, thanks so much for your talk. I just wanted to ask you real quick, what are some of the biggest challenges for you? Because you have this wonderful, rich history of developing innovative uh, vertical takeoff aircraft, and now we're entering this electrified world. And I was just wondering what some of your biggest challenges are from your um, 
history of innovation to that. What's changed in the last, last few years? Well, I think, uh, I think our biggest challenge uh, is probably common across all the EV tolls, and that is um, battery energy density that you're very familiar with. And uh, uh, not just the, at the cell level, but integrating it into the aircraft in a way that will meet the safety requirements of the FAA, but is uh, acceptable within the weight limits that can be allocated and still have a productive aircraft. I think that's the, the number one issue. And, um, and so, you know, part of our rationale in focusing on the slowed rotor wing compound is that because it's made, uh, all of its constituent technologies are fairly well understood, uh, it really allows us to focus on that, on that question, on that risk. Uh, some of the other areas that we want to explore and burn down risk include the uh, variable incidence wing. Uh, that is, uh, that's a key feature of the technology. Um, it, uh, it's been demonstrated in flight before, we're never in a rotocraft application. So um, uh, characterization of the uh, performance of that wing in the low speed and transition flight is gonna be an important part of our risk reduction program. Anybody else have questions? Hi, Johnny Do I want to thank you for your leadership on the NASA stuff. Very future looking. I don't think That's, I can. Nate, how do, we, uh, how do we get other questions? Yeah, so James, James Simarad raised his hand. Maybe we could give James the floor. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I, I am a retired Navy commander, and uh, we worked on the Fire Scout helicopter back in West Africa probably 10 years ago. Right. And I'm a logistician. Yes. In the Detroit area where we're developing the autonomous cars, and it's really, this is really the hub of autonomous vehicles. And uh, we got plugged into the Space Launch Initiative with the Air Force Association. My question is, what is your network of contacts? I mean, how do you bring all of these people that are buried in um, different pockets? I, I sent an email out to Melinda and I said, you got to join this agility prime thing. It's really cool. But what is your network? I mean, how do you come up with bringing all the right resources together for this project? So that is a that's a really important uh, part of uh, doing what we do, and uh, and it is tough uh, bringing to bear the uh, specialty expertise. You have to be collaborative. You have to be looking out for uh, technology sources and talent uh, that are passionate about what they do on one side, and on the other side, you have to be working uh, uh, with uh, the operators and the customers to be understand what what the problems are. Um, we're probably uh, uh, one of our most important uh, attributes as a company is we let the mission drive the, the need drive the solution. So, so having uh, ears open to your customer and understanding what the, the uh, nexus of the various needs are that they have and coming up with an optimum solution. Um, you know, and in some degree, our, our heritage or our history uh, attracts attracts a lot of people, both from the customer side and uh, and from the um, a technology source and and, and talent side. Uh, but it is a diff difficult part of the business. It is it's the most difficult part of the business, and uh, we have our share of pain there too. Very good, thank you. Other questions. Yeah, John. Hey. Uh, this is Johnny Dew. How are you? <laughs> yes, Johnny. How are you? I'm Thank doing you good. again. Uh, you're quite welcome. It's a team effort here. Yep. The, um, you know, you're working on at least two very challenging uh, uh, configuration vehicles. And even though you're leveraging some proven technology, it is still a uh, unique design, configuration, handling quality. How do you handle, manage your team? 
uh, between different projects. Uh, do you separate them from the two into two different groups, or do they you know, do you share the talents and knowledge and experiences within your well, team? Well, yeah. Well, the, the, you're you're uh, you're focusing on a on the most difficult challenge that you have as a small innovative company and, and with limited resources. Um, the way we uh, try to do it is that uh, uh, we assign um, leadership within engineering uh, to have a specific responsibility for projects. And then we have a pool of engineering talent that we allocate to those projects as they go through their development cycle. Um, so in the ideal world, you have projects that are going through design, fabrication, and testing. And to the extent that they can be uh, staggered, um, you can bring to bear uh, the d various talents necessary to get the flight um, uh, in a phased way that uh, doesn't burden you. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Murphy's got a vote, and very often we have programs where we have uh, overlapping demands, and we have a, a, a great pool of uh, well-experienced uh, uh, subject matter experts, uh, consultants that have a lot of experience in the industry that we draw on to both mentor our young talent and help us meet surge requirements. Thank you. We have one question on chat, or a couple of questions on chat. Um, it was asked, electric, electric propulsion is still nowhere near the fuel combustion option when it comes to cost and efficiency. Is anyone pursuing an affordable design? The hybrid is still better than all electric. Yeah, I would, uh, the way I would answer that question is it really depends on what the mission is and, uh, and what your expectations are for the evolution of technology. Um, when we uh, started out the, the uh, P890 eVTOL program, uh, we agreed amongst our, ourselves that, uh, that we wanted to des design the configuration for, for anticipated energy densities of batteries um, in the 24, 2024 timeframe. Uh, so that's an inherent risk to the, to the program. Um, and a main reason why we designed our batteries to be modular um, so that we can adopt improved technologies as they're proven and, and, uh, and deployed. Um, uh, the, uh, the Ares vehicle is not an electrically powered vehicle. Uh, it is, uh, it's a twin turbine aircraft. Um, and the reason why we looked at electric propulsion early on, and it just simply did not have the energy density necessary to do these military missions. Um, now, I, uh, I recognize that uh, we see some opportunities opening up as, as batteries and hybrid technology evolve. Um, but uh, when we started that program, uh, really turbines were the key, key, uh, key component to having the energy needed to accomplish the military mission. All right. And with that, everyone, I apologize, but apparently our time is up. They are ready to uh, re-begin the YouTube live stream. Uh, John, thank you very much for the deep dive and the Q&A and your time. Uh, the only issue with YouTube Live is that apparently the website stream has gone a little wonky, so there is a new link. I believe the new link is on Twitter, and we are also putting it in the chat here uh, on this Zoom. Let me double check that it's there. Yep, it's there. It's the last chat, last chat link that is on there right now. So we're going to go ahead and let everyone head back to YouTube Live. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you all back there.